Hey guys, I'm Brian. And I'm Terry. And welcome back to another episode in our Forest to Farm series here on Survival Dispatch. Today we're wrapping up our PPE series with Scott from Husqvarna. This is going to be episode 7 in the series and today we're talking about reactionary forces and the thing everybody hears about the most is kickback. And you know, these things are very important, all these reactionary forces, because when you're using a saw, there's so much raw power there, it's not always going to do exactly what you want. And if it doesn't, what's going to happen with that saw varies depending on how that saw is being used to do a top cut, bottom cut, if you're cutting with the tip of the saw. There's a it, tremendous amount of force and energy. Yes. And that, that energy is going somewhere. When that saw pinches, it's something's going to happen. The <laughs> saw is going to jerk away from you, jump back, yep. kick up. Scott does an excellent job of describing phenomenal how these detail. things occur, and, and yeah. you know things that we didn't really know the details on. We know a lot more. Yes, <laughs> it's awesome. We learned so much here, and I've always known about kickback, but I never truly knew why it happened or what I could do to prevent it. And he, he just phenomenal explanation here. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. The man knows his stuff. I'm one thing he does is he's got one of these little boogers, and he talks about how that wood comes into it like this mm -hmm. one is coming around that bar that's when it opens us up and now you've got a huge gap going into that log yeah and that's something not so technical version here scott gets more technical right but <laughs> i just brought that up because that's yeah. something that that's the part we didn't really understand yeah you know you knew that was the area but you didn't know why exactly and yeah. that's pay close attention you yeah. can really learn some and hopefully here. we can do a lot more of this kind of stuff with uh, with scott and husqvarna in the future just mm -hmm. this has been a ton of fun and we have learned so much in this series we really hope you guys have as well because there's so much that goes on when you're cutting trees that can happen that can go wrong and if you have the proper protective equipment and know how to run your saw properly you're going to eliminate or at least greatly reduce the chances of that kind of stuff happening. Right, and these first seven videos again with Scott are basically covering personal protection, personal protection equipment yep. and some of the proper usage, the basics. There's yeah. a whole lot more details. We'll get into felling trees and get a lot more detailed on yeah. all those aspects. We've really been blessed. We with can get out there and drop a tree and pretty much get it to go where we want, but we're not always doing it exactly the way it should be done. Probably not. Scott's going to show us how to do it properly, and yeah. I'll try to start doing that from and now on. And I think on. we've re really been blessed to have him come on yeah. board and work with us here. This it's, has been it's awesome. Been phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed the series, and hope you enjoy this final video in the series. It's really a good one. And we'll see you in the next round. Have a good one, guys. Hey, guys. Brian here with Forest to Farm Project. We're back with Scott Martin from Husqvarna, and we're going to be going through reactive forces with the chainsaws. And for people not following along yet, Scott, tell us a little about yourself. So, Scott Martin, I've been with Husqvarna for 25 years. Uh, territory manager for upstate South Carolina and uh, just here to try to spread some knowledge. We really appreciate it. We're learning a lot through the series. You guys, if you haven't been following along, check the description. We'll have links below for everything we've been doing. Some really great information Scott's been sharing with us. So let's learn about reactive forces. Sure. So what we want to talk about today, um, the, the most common thing that people talk about is kickback. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple of other aspects of uh, uh, reactive forces that I will make sure that we want to talk about mm -hmm. and, and why they're important to know. So. Uh, first and foremost, you'll see my little prop here. Uh, I've written up here, push, pull, and then I've got this area right here that's kind of blacked out in that corner. So push, push is going this way. So you've heard the, the term for every, every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, Yeah. right? So you think in terms of this saw, cranking the saw up, chain's running in that direction, mm -hmm. right? So what happens if that chain on the top here mm -hmm. before it runs the tip of the bar if that chain is going this way 60 miles an hour mm -hmm. and it comes to a sudden stop that saw is coming back at you That's exactly right so this is the action this mm -hmm. is the reaction so the 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 moral of that story there is to know that if i'm cutting with the top and that's a very useful oh yeah uh, way to cut if you're doing undercuts and mm -hmm. things like that if you're cutting with the top here the saw chain is going away from the saw if it if it pinches mm -hmm. and that chain comes to a sudden stop the reaction is to come mm -hmm. for the saw to come that, back towards That gear is still driving. Still driving. A lot of inertia, a lot mm -hmm. of momentum going on. The whole purpose to talk about there is to know that when you're using that saw in that application, what you don't want to do is get the saw too far away from mm -hmm. you. I mean, really the, the best way to utilize a saw is up close and personal to your mm -hmm. body. So you're holding it close to you. You're not spending a lot of time and effort with the saw being away from you because what that does, it puts a lot of pressure on your back. Yeah. 
and it, it, it lends to a lot of fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, and if you hold the saw up for, I mean, I would I would challenge you to do it for 30 seconds like yeah. this. The further it goes away from your body, the more strain it puts on mm -hmm. your back. Just a tremendous load. So keep that saw close and personal to your body. And, um, and if you're using the top of the chain here, mm -hmm. When it's going that way, if it comes back at you in a kickback or a, 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 a push scenario, you want to have that saw close to you so that way it's not, you don't have all this this momentum to pick up before it does Right, hit you don't you. have the open space to push back. Right. It's tucked into your workspace, you have much more control here. Right, and it's, it, if, it does, if it does push back, it's going to hit you right here in the hip yeah. or it's going to take you right here on the inside of the thigh. Um, whatever it is, it's, mm -hmm. it, as long as it's close to your body, yeah. it's going to be a much better scenario. Because what you don't want to do is have that saw away, especially if you're cutting down low, mm -hmm. and 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 it have that that scenario occur where this this piece here can come along and hit you in, in the inside of the knee, mm -hmm. and and it'll just lay you down. Yeah, right. So <clears throat> just knowing that when you're cutting with this, that's the action. This is the reaction. By the same token, if I'm cutting with the bottom. I've written the word pull right here. So if I'm if I'm cutting with the bottom, mm -hmm. the saw chain at this point is coming back towards the sprocket, mm -hmm. right? So I'm coming this way at 60 miles an hour. So what happens if it comes to a sudden and complete stop right here? If you don't have a good grip on it, it's gonna yank out of your hand. That's just keep exactly going. right. Yep. So the the whole purpose of this is to know that if you're if you're cutting with the bottom mm -hmm. and it comes to a sudden and complete stop, that it could come it could launch out of your hands. Worst case scenario. Yeah. So that's why you want to make sure that you got gloves on, mm -hmm. right? So now my hands aren't sweaty. I don't, I've got a good grip on the saw. Uh, the other thing is, is that I'm utilizing a full grip with my left hand. I'm not up here with my thumb wrapped to the top. I'm actually wrapped to the bottom. So I've got a good solid grip mm -hmm. on the front handle of the saw. So that's what happens when you're cutting with the bottom. That's what could happen is it could go, it could pull out of your hands. So again, just making sure that the saw is close to you. Mm -hmm. you've, got, uh, you know, you've got good energy holding the saw and, and it's close to you and it's not causing you a lot of fatigue. Um, the last thing that people talk about, uh, the people, thing that people talk about the most is kickback. So the kickback zone, people talk about well, you can't cut with the tip of the bar. Well, that's not true. You can cut with the tip of the bar mm -hmm very effectively. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of applications where you need to use the tip of the bar to get into a piece of wood and drive through in a plunge cut and then come out mm -hmm. and set up different methods of, uh, of felling and things like that. So to you, and you have to use the tip of the bar yeah. in order to do that. But what you don't want to do is enter the wood in this quadrant right here. What you'll see is about a 45 degree segment right mm -hmm. here. That's the area where a kickback typically occurs. Right, and once you once you've crested that that the tip of the bar, you're not really into the kickback zone per se, as long as the chain has not been abused or dogged up, or you yeah. know the, the rakers are, the the depth gauge has gone down too far. Um, but but that area right there is where you could potentially get the kickback zone. So we talked about equal and opposite reactions, right? So the chain is going this way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my prop here. Um, saw chain is coming down the bar like this. Mm -hmm. All right. The reason kickback occurs, and this is very important to understand, the reason it occurs is because this piece right here is called a depth gauge. Mm -hmm. In most chains that we manufacture, the distance between this tip and this tip is 25 thousandths of an inch. Mm -hmm. So you're taking 25 thousandths of a, of a sliver of wood every time this thing crosses a piece, that's setting up that depth. Mm -hmm. If, if, if uh, whoever's operating the saw, if they take this down too much, mm -hmm. now that 25 or 25 thousandths becomes 30 thousandths, 35 thousandths, whatever. And if it gets too much, it can't process it. It can't shear mm -hmm. that piece of wood off. And so what happens is it jams. Mm -hmm. Think in terms of, uh, of, a, of a, a wood plane. Mm -hmm. Like if you're trying to plane a piece of wood with an old fashioned wood plane, you've got the depth gauge that comes out. Depth gauge basically sets up how much wood you're gonna remove yeah. from the piece that you're working. Um, and if you take, if you drive the blade down too much, mm -hmm. you're grabbing too much wood and now you can't process it, it stops. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if the depth gauge is too shallow, if the, if the blade is too shallow, now you're just shaving and getting really, really small mm -hmm. increments. So 25 thousandths in the saw chain world is the distance between here and here. Mm -hmm. That's how much you're taking. So 
With that being said, so imagine this saw chain is running down the bar at 60 miles an hour. So I've got roughly, and now this is a prop here, but in, yeah. in a standard saw chain, it would be about, I don't know, maybe, well, it's 25 thousandths of an inch. Yeah. That's, that's what the number is. <laughs> so Tiny. Tiny, it's tiny, <laughs> but it's effective. Yeah. So imagine what happens now when it starts going over the tip. Mm -hmm. So now that 25 thousandths of an inch now has turned into three-eighths of an inch yeah. because it has opened up the tip right there. Mm -hmm. and now it's too much for it to process. When it's too much for it to process, chain comes to a sudden and complete stop. Mm -hmm. At that point on the bar, if it stops right here, this is the point where mm -hmm. kickback occurs. So that's how that happens. It's right there in that upper quadrant, right? And you can start with the bottom if you mm -hmm. happen to do a plunge cut. And we can get more into felling techniques and things like that later. But for the purpose of this conversation here, you can start with the bottom and then rotate the saw mm -hmm. in once you've made contact and then you can plunge cut through. Yeah. And then you can set up your hinge and your back cut and mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. But the, the moral of this story here is, is all about the kickback zone and what occurs and why it occurs. And it happens because 25 thousandths of an inch becomes about three eighths of an inch and it's way too much wood to process. Yeah. And the chain is gonna stop and when it stops, that's the reaction. Yep. Makes total sense. And you know, I've always thought about kickback, but never totally understood why it happened. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just a, a, you know, good, good what, what to know in that application. If you're, if you're cutting with the tip, which you can cut with the tip, uh, but if you're cutting with the tip, be aware that if you're cutting with that top quadrant, mm -hmm. that could happen. So, yep. you know, you, you make sure that you want to protect yourself and really don't cut with that, with that quadrant. You can cut yeah. with the tip, but start with the bottom. Yeah. Uh, one more thing that I'll talk about on, uh, on uh, different styles of bars. It, if, you, if I lay this bar, this is for a smaller saw, but if I lay this bar over this bigger bar here, what you'll see is a much bigger radius. Mm -hmm. And different saws require different uh, tail mounts right here where it bolts up to the saw. So, um, you know, but what it'll also do is it will give to a wider profile of bar all the way up to the tip. There's a fine line that we walk when it comes to sizes of the tip. If the tip is too small, you create too much heat, mm -hmm. especially if you've got a high speed saw. So we have to make sure that we've got a, a bearing system in here that's good enough to be able to withstand the heat mm -hmm. because that friction of that tight radius creates a lot more heat than, a, than the friction that's created on a larger radius like this. Yeah. When you're using this, however, the bigger the bar, the bigger that kickback zone is. Mm -hmm. So there's a trade off there. You can utilize something like this, but in a big saw, this, you wouldn't think about putting a saw blade this small on, on a saw this big. Yeah. Right? But, but uh, and so you would require a bigger bar. Mm -hmm. Bigger bar has a bigger tip. Bigger tip has a bigger kickback zone. Yep. So Makes sense. you just have to be aware of you utilizing the saw uh, in a certain application in a certain way right there on the tip. Sounds good. That's some awesome information. I hope you guys learned a lot there. I know I did. Well, guys, that wraps it up for this series, and I cannot tell you, we appreciate this so much, Scott. It has been Absolutely. a ton of fun, and hopefully we have more coming in the future, guys. And Scott is obviously a wealth of knowledge, and we've just learned so much for this whole series. And like I said, if you haven't seen the series, check the description below. There's links for all the videos, and future videos, we'll put a link there as well. Just really some great information. I know I've learned a lot. I've been running saw for five years, and I've learned a ton of stuff. Good. Well, I'm glad. I mean, the whole purpose we wanted to do here today was just show some awareness on chainsaw safety. Regardless of what brand you're using, if it's Husqvarna, if it's steel, it doesn't matter. Um, all the things we talked about today are true in whatever brand it is. Mm -hmm. And so there was really no flying the flag of, of Husqvarna per se, but uh, you know, all the things we did talk about are, are definitely relevant in, in chainsaw safety, period. Yeah, it makes a difference. You know, you treat these things right and they'll do great for you. The moment you treat them wrong, you're gonna get bit. And just take your time. Be professional and wear your chaps and all your other PPE. Absolutely. And uh, utilize some of the things we talked about today. And what we don't want to hear is uh, somebody utilizing our product and, and getting getting injured. You know, yeah. that, that would just be a travesty. So um, take the time, uh, spend a little bit of money, buy the chaps, uh, invest in yourself, and uh, and, and it'll, it'll pay back. You get one body. Take care of it. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And guys, uh, like, share, subscribe. You know, Give us that big thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. And hit that subscribe button below. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified when we post new videos. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook, and check back off. And we got a ton coming, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. It's all safe.